as a little preparatory exercise, I asked you, you can take the right hand, have the pedal down before you even start for the first chord of the A minor scale and chords. In the natural, we're not worried about any black notes here. So here's the first chord. This is called the one chord because it's the first degree of the scale and it's a chord. So the pedal's already down. And by the way, when you do this, you want to approach the chord with what? That supple wrist. So you get what? Not a smack. Now what I would suggest you do is hold it for three counts. So the pedal's down and you go one, two, three. Now it's still, your hand's still here. Now, when you go to the next chord, which is B, D, F, the pedal's still going to be down until you play the chord, and then it's going to go up, down really fast. But you don't lift your heel off the ground. You're using the, the ball of your foot to make the pedal change. You're not, you know, lifting your foot like that, right? Because nobody wants to hear you doing that. Now you go to the next, the third note of C, E, G. You still have your hand down. The pedal's already down. But now, up, down, real fast. See how clear it is? You don't pick up anything from the other chord. It's very clear. Now you get ready to go here. Pedal still down. Up, down, real fast. So it comes after you play. Up, down, real fast. And then you do the next one. Up, down. After, I'm saying up, down, right after I play the chord, right? Still down. Up, down. And you don't hear me making a racket either. Now, if I want to make a racket to show you what when I'm doing it, I could, but I, I'd rather teach you to be quiet about your pedal changes. And I'm even being real shallow with the pedal. See, look how shallow that, that little stroke is with my foot. Can you see what I'm doing? Yes, I can. I see. see, look how, and it's very clear. There's nothing blurring. See? Mm -hmm. And then... So you're really doing things like this. That's how shallow your pedal is. It still accomplishes the sustain without going way down. You don't have to go way down to the bottom. You just use maybe half of the pedal motion. Is That's all that's used. Now, if you have a very stiff pedal on your piano, which I doubt, and you have to do all that work, that's another issue. But I doubt you have that kind of pedal. Um, the other thing that you should do in terms of the theory of music <laughs> Is play, and now you have that sheet I gave you, the chord sheet, is to play A minor using the harmonic form in chords. That means whenever you get to a G, it will have to have a G sharp, because that's how we name the chords, such as this is the tonic, right? It's a minor chord. You know how we know it's minor? Because we explore a five finger position and see if C fits into the minor, it does. If we had a C sharp, it would be a major chord. Right? So this is called a minor chord. That's the tonic will always be minor in the minor key, whatever minor key you're in. Now here's the two chord of the super tonic. Play, up down pedal. That's diminished. The reason it's called diminished, first of all, you want to train your ear to hear a diminished chord. It's kind of eerie sounding, isn't it? If you keep going up and you keep building other notes on top of it. Unstable. It just can't stay there. It has to go somewhere else. It's called the supertonic. Diminished. When we go to the three chord. We have to have a G here, but we've got to have a G sharp because harmonic minor uses what? G sharp. Raise the seventh note. And you get a different sound here. That's called an augmented chord. The reason it's augmented is if we analyze from here to here and we see if that's major, if we went up C, D, E, F, G, let's say, and we did every other note, we'd get a what kind of chord? Major. It would be like the five notes of C major. But we have the G sharp, so over here, we have to analyze the distance from here to here now. Now, if we do build a major, chord, major five finger position from E or a minor one, we could see what major would be. Do we get a G sharp in the major? Yes, we do. Because you know how to build major five finger positions now, because you know the rule. Whole step, whole, half whole. If it was minor, it would be what? G natural. And that would give you an every other note minor. But guess what? We have what in the middle now? This. 
So this is a major chord here, and this is a major chord on either side. So that gives us what? Augmented equals major third plus another major third. Major third plus major third equals augmented chord. And you might not get this right away because a lot of information, but just start tucking it away. This is a four chord. It's called the subdominant. Subdominant. Is this sound major or minor? Is it sad? Or is it happy? It's sad. You know, you could do it just by testing. If you bring the middle note up, you'd say, oh, that's the major. That This can't be major. This is minor. And then you have the five. Pedal up, down. That's your dominant. Dominants are always major. The word dominant means major. And in all scales, whether they're minor scales or major scales, their dominant chord will be a major chord. So you should know that. Now the sixth chord is what? Does that sound happy or sad? Compare it to. So it's what? It's major. Chord. Major. Right, because you want to ear train. You know, you want to be a musician that doesn't rely on the at theory analysis of everything. You want to have what? Appreciation of differences in tone and sound as it applies to your playing the piano. Now here, the seven chord, we had to skip over to the G sharp because we don't have a G in the harmonic form. What is this? If we kept going up, what is that? Diminished. Diminished. It is not major and it is not minor. In fact, the real analysis of a diminished chord is a minor third from here to here and a minor third from here to here. If you test it, you'd have to go, that's minor, right? Maybe you can build a minor five finger position on that note and then do every other, and that's minor. And then if you go what? To the what? The next part, you'd have, you'd have again a minor third because this is a minor five finger position. And then you'd have this, the third one, right? Would be the D. Finally, we're back home to the tonic on the top. So I want you to also, for theory purposes, when you do your exercise, up down pedal, down pedal, up down pedal, up down pedal. That's called a legato pedaling. And it's really, that's good pedaling, you know, because nothing's merging, blurring. It's very clean, and you don't have gasps. Because here's the, the propensity is for two things to happen. Either submerging too many notes together, blurring, which happens with students, or the other extreme is letting the pedal go too soon and you get a gasp or a dry spot. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do in this particular prelude is not have dry spots. Because if we blocked it out, like I, what I was mentioning that you should do, if you blocked it, you wanted to have like a beautiful sustained from, from chord to chord without dry spots. Lean. And then here, you won't have a pedal. Actually, when you actually play this out, you'll have the pedaling as follows, a measure seven. No pedal. That's no pedal here at all. See? But up to there, you have what? Measure by measure, legato pedaling.